Good evening. Th th thank you for coming. Thank you. Feel free to take a seat. Yes, people are just starting to show up. Plenty of seats open, ma'am. Plenty of seats open. Feel free to uh, hope so. Yes, sir. A anywhere, anywhere over there is fine. Anywhere over there is fine. Nope, no, you can't go that way, ma'am. I apologize. Those are reserve seating. That is hype team seating only over there, ma'am. You will not be able to sit over there. And that's why there's a velvet rope, ma'am. Yes. That's shit. It should be a good show. Yes. Please take a seat. Please take M Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, this way, please. V VIP. Please, please take care of him. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody get a seat. The show will be starting soon. Uh, every, every, please fill in all, all of the seats. The show will be starting soon. Thank you all for uh, for coming to another presentation from Raider Reaction. We always appreciate it. Thank you, as always. Please take a seat. Please take a seat. Sir, you, you can't smoke that in here. Uh, as, as much as I'd love to let you, you're gonna have to take that outside. All right, it appears with standing room only at the back now. At this point, if you're just showing up, I apologize. Next time, show up earlier and maybe you'll get a seat. Enjoy the show. mature audiences only, so if you can't stand the heat, stay away from the fire.
up, Raider Nation? I am the Commish, coming to you live as always from the friendly confines of Hardcore Challenge Live Studios. And just where is that, might you ask? Well, fuck, it's hump day. So I got no. It's a real late in the week. Y'all gonna need some directions, man. Everybody needs a good landmark, right? Hey, we're just down the street, past that house, with the boarded up windows. Make sure you stop at the corner and ask my man Joe. He's a gentleman. He's a scholar. Most of all, he's a man of commerce. Slipping what you should. He's gonna point you in the right direction. He's gonna tell you to take a left, and then a right, as you find yourself strolling down the street. Minding your own goddamn business. Just, you know, nobody really up in shit. Fuck, he ain't bothering nobody. A cool breeze will hit you. That chills you right to your skeletal core, and you find yourself asking, Was that the autumn wind? Oh, you goddamn right. Should you venture down that deep, dark alley? Well, of course you should. What you're gonna find at the end is a special little place that the special folks right here, the hangout at Raider Reaction, yeah, we like to call. Deep behind the enemy line, this is your special hump day edition of the Raider Nation Report. Slash goes to the post. As we will have Prime joining me for the second half of the show as we get into what's coming up. But first, we must dig in to what has been, what has happened, and what was week 13. Before we move into week 14, talk about them bitch ass Colts. Where do we begin? Where do we begin with my uh, week 13 wrap up? Um, Let's start with the first half, shall we? Let's start with the first half. This was a, this was too big of a game to lose. I think we all knew it after what happened with the at the freaking uh, Falcons. It was do or die time. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Thank you all for joining me as always. First off, before I uh, go any further, what's up, Mike? What's up, Daryl? What's up, everybody? Thank you guys all for joining me as always. Appreciate any second you guys spend with me here at Raider Reaction. You guys are the shit. You are why we do what we do. Thank you all for joining us as always. So, like I said, I wasn't here last night on my normal evening. I've been a bit under the weather since the weekend. Um, luckily, it's not what, you know... Anybody dreads to even say the word. It wasn't that. So it's just, just a little ill. So I'm back. I'm not quite 100%, but I'm here because there's a lot to talk about. So let's get right to it. Let's go waste your fucking time, shall we? We've got a lot to get to. Okay, boss. Let's do it. Week 13. The first half, man. You come out in the first half. You, Darren Waller has one of the most epic halves a tight end historically has ever had in the National Football League. Uh, you've got your offense clicking. Uh, you heard it. If any of you watched Prime's uh, Just Win Baby from last week, you heard it. Prime laid out the keys to victory, and the key to victory was Darren Waller. And just as Prime laid it out for you, that's what came to be. He was he was the big key piece in that uh, win over the Jets. I mean, not quite the, you know, the key piece at the end. We'll get to that in a little bit. But Darren Waller, you you. You've got, he's having one of the epic halves. You, your defense is playing a, a phenomenal half. A phenomenal half. you got Cleveland Farrell, who's back off the COVID list, and he is just getting after shit. A uh, couple strip sacks. He's wrecking shit. Uh, you got Trayvon Mullen, who makes an amazing interception. So you've got the defense hitting on all cylinders in the first half. You've got your offense you're lighting it up with Waller. You're getting by without Jacobs. Everything is going your way in, your, in the first half. Everything is going your way. You're having an amazing play from the defense. You're giving up a few more points than you probably shouldn't have given up to the Jets in the first half. But, you know, it is what it is. This is a, you, you can't count out a team in the National Football League just because of their record. Oh, they hadn't won a game. This is a professional football team. These guys are playing to win. They're playing for pride, man. If you think that players are going out there to lose every week, the, the coaching staff and the ownership may be, you know, stocking the fucking shelves for a tank, but they're not playing for a tank. Those guys ain't playing to tank a fucking thing. They're there, and they're, they're playing their hearts out to not be embarrassed on a weekly fucking basis. So... I mean, these guys are playing for jobs every week. The Jets are going to be a complete overhaul. So these guys have just think these guys, the guys on the field, are going down and laying down on a weekly basis is, is just bullshit. They've been set up 
to to fail by what they've been put in the cupboard to you know make dinner with it, it's just state fucking much there so you have this first half you're, you're going out i mean it, everything is going the way it should be going against the new york j-e-t-s jets and then you come out and then you come out in the second half and again 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 this coaching staff gets in the way of this fucking team and, and what is going on. You've come out. You've implemented the game plan that you wanted to implement from the start of the game. Everything is going successful. Um, you're getting the you're getting the action that you've you've wanted on both sides of the ball. Everything is going well, and you come out in the second half and you come right out and you go down the field and you score you put points on their ass exactly what you wanted to do and then right after that is like we drop it down a gear we go to the run run dump the run run short pass we and which ends up three and out three and out turnover and you just don't get anything going this Coaching staff in the second half has this mentality of not lose instead of win the fucking game. Win the fucking game. You get the ball back again and you go down and put more points on the fucking Jets ass, it's over. This team wilts and it's done. There, there's, there's no fight for them to come back in, in the second half like they did. You go down and put this team down by three scores, this team wilts and they're done. They, they will fucking lay down. They're done. So you have to understand that. This team, it's not even the team, it's the coaching staff. Lays off the fucking gas. And for the fact that for Gruden to come out and one of the first things he says in the press conference is, hey, we didn't lay off the gas. We didn't lay off the gas. Really? If you're coming out and the first thing you fucking say is, whoa, we didn't lay on the gas. We didn't lay off the gas. Then you laid off the fucking gas because you damn well know it. You're coming right out and defending, defending the action right at the out of the gate in the fucking press conference. You brought it up. Oh, we didn't let our foot off the gas. Oh no no no! I don't want to do. I don't care how you explain that away, man. You, and Corey is right. You gotta step on the fucking throat. You gotta know when to gut him. You gotta know when to just finish it. You've got to have that killer instinct. And I'm telling it's getting late in the fucking season to be developing that shit. Like Rich Gannon said two weeks ago when you were going into the Falcon game, this is when good teams, good playoff teams, are, are, are hitting the, the strong part. And they're, they're, they're hitting their stride. They're, they're strong. They're, they're on a roll. They're hitting the hot part of their season. The Raiders are just trying to fucking find themselves. You have a game like the Falcons, and then you have a game like the Jets. And as much as the D played and blah, 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 you know, we can't take away what the end was. The end was magnificent. And we, we can't, you know, I, it is what it is, man. This is some fucking shit right here. That's some Hail Mary shit. This is stuff, you know, this is stuff of lore right here. Yeah, it's the fucking Jets. J-E-T-S Jets. I fucking get it. They're O and whatever. I get it. I get it. I get it. But five seconds on the clock, man. This just doesn't happen. You're standing on the logo. They go all out blitz, which was the dumbest fucking play in almost in the history of football. I mean, defensive coordinators are trashing them for this horrible. But you, this, this was... It, it, it was a great win, man. It, it was a good win. It, it is what it is. It keeps your season alive. Yeah, it was the fucking Jets. Yeah, it was this. Yeah, it was that. You've got to learn from this, and you got to continue to learn, and you got to learn quick, man, because what's coming down the pipe is a is a tough matchup, and we're going to get to that with uh, Prime later. But Ruggs almost cost the team the game, and in you know, in amazing fashion, you completely redeemed yourself, just like what we just showed you. But let's not forget, interception, that was totally his, man. You're an NFL wide receiver, and if the ball hits you in the fucking hands, you should have caught it. Ah, oh, but I had to dive. Did it hit you in the hands? You should have caught it. But, but, did it hit you in the hands? You should have caught it. I was in double coverage. Did it hit you in the motherfucking hands? You should have caught it. What's your job? You're a receiver. Your only fucking job is to catch the fucking ball. That's it. It's the only thing on your contract.
Catch the ball. Just win, baby. Two things. That's all it says. Sign here. Millions of dollars. So I don't want to hear any fucking excuses. First interception was totally on Henry Ruggs III. The second one, second turnover, is my biggest concern about this guy. I, I, I keep hearing the speed kills, and yes, we've seen it. We've seen speed kills. We've seen it right here, okay? I get it. This is what you brought the kid in for. But, 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 the big but on Henry Ruggs III is the play before that where he almost cost you the fucking game. Is, does he have the size? I mean, you look at that little svelte motherfucker. He ain't but fucking... He ain't no 200 pounds. Hell no. That's a little dude, man. And when he got slammed on the fucking ground, ball comes popping out. So that's my biggest concern about Henry Ruggs III. Is that you brought in this guy to be your number one. Yeah, he's fast. Yeah, he's this, he's that. But... He's not very big. He's not going to go over the middle for you a lot. So he's, to me, he's a little bit of a pigeonholed weapon, man, that you can't use as, you know, across the board. So I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about that. And you've seen how they've used him in the games that he's played. They're even still trying to figure out how the fuck to use this guy. They haven't really figured it out either. He, he's not a big body. He's fast. And he's got great hands. But you know, when you're that size, man, and you got safety slamming your ass to the ground and corners, big corners slamming you to the ground, I don't know. It's a concern to me. And we've seen it pop up against the Jets. So hopefully it's not something that you know raises his ugly heads again. But he totally redeemed himself, man. He totally redeemed himself. Hallelujah. fucking Hail Hail Mary. <laughs> we won't even go there about the Jets, since we're having that little conversation behind the scenes. But <laughs> so, what does this do for your playoff chances? Well, you dropped yourself down into the thirty percent last week with the playoff chances. This week, get back up into the forties. 40% chance to make the playoffs now. That is in based on scenarios of 192,000. So that is a pretty fair fucking estimation of what your percentage is to make it. You have a 1% chance for a bye week. That's been pretty much pissed down the toilet. You have a 1% chance to host a wild card. There's about a chance in fucking hell of that happening. You have a 40% chance just to get a wild card and go play somewhere. That's really what you're playing for now. And 60% that you're still on the inside, on the outside looking in. That's still 60%. Let's not look past that bottom bar down there. Yeah, you moved it up out of the 30s into the 40s. But because of what you did in Atlanta, playing against the shitbirds in their fucking retractical butthole stadium, this is where we're at now. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You did make an improvement, but it's not a good thing with where you're currently setting. Not, not not the best case scenario to be in. Now, just want to touch on one thing in case you guys had forgotten. You know, last week technically was the first Thursday of the month, which is when we technically usually have our official supporter raffles here at uh, Raider Reaction. Well, we did not have it last week because uh, Facebook was having some technical issues. It wasn't uh, due to us. It was due to fucking Facebook. So we had to postpone the raffle for one more week. So tomorrow night it's going down. December 10th. The supporter raffle here on uh, Raider Reaction is going down tomorrow night. Our sponsors, RaiderNationStore.net. And motosports.com, I've hooked us up once again. We've upped the number this month. We have 28 prize packs to give away. We got t-shirts, poker chips, Raider Nation flags, uh, the Gator face masks, uh, inaugural season patches, bumper stickers, buttons. God damn, there's just so much shit. What the hell all over there? Bracelets. Freaking coasters, magnets. We got all kinds of stuff over there to give away. Uh, t-shirts from Moto Sports. Uh, 20% off coupons from RaiderNationStore.net. Cards from, uh, Hall of Fame cards from The Violator. All kinds of stuff.
tons of stuff. Plus, we got some vintage football cards we're giving away this time. Whole bunch of stuff we're giving away tomorrow night. Same Raider time, same Raider channel, same damn time as you're watching right now. Same damn time. So you can tune in tomorrow night, and if you're an official supporter, if you're one of the cool kids in the audience rocking that supporter badge next to your name, you just get to show up, kick back, and we're going to give away 28 prize packs. What's that mean? Yeah, 28 chances to win prizes. All you got to do is be an official supporter of Raider Reaction. Help us paint the world silver and black. If you like the Raider content that we're putting out, you like my, me, you like the other members of the hype team that come on here, you like the memes, you like the shit that we do, you like... The Raider content that we bring you 365 fucking days a year, 25 hours a day, 8 days a fucking week. If you like that, become an official supporter. Click that blue button. Do it. Do it. Do it. Because this is what's going down tomorrow. This Thursday, December 10th, is the next supporter raffle on Raider Reaction. Have you become an official supporter yet? All you got to do is go to the top of the Facebook page. Click that blue button to become an official supporter of Raider Reaction. Or go to RaiderReaction.com and click the supporter tab. All of the info is there. 28 prize packs to give away tomorrow night from RaiderNationStore.net, Raider Reaction, and Motosports.com. Do not miss out. Become a supporter now. So don't miss out, man. Become an official supporter. Go click that blue button. Go to the Facebook. Go to the website. Just do the thing, man. So tomorrow night we can give away some free shit. That's how we do it here. That's how we do it. You give to us, we give back to you. It helps us keep doing what we're doing, and it gives you some amazing chances. I mean, you basically got better than a fifty percent chance to win a prize tomorrow night by being an official supporter, and that helps us keep the fucking keep the shit moving. So. Thank you all that do support Raider Reaction. All of you in the Dark Side Inner Circle group. You guys are the shit. I appreciate every goddamn one of you to the fucking fullest extent that I can even describe. You have no goddamn idea. You guys are the shit. Appreciate every goddamn one of you. So, moving on, moving on, moving on. That's what they say. They say that too. Now, moving on, make sure, of course, make sure you follow us on all of our social media outlets, all that shit, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, blah, 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 all that. You guys, you guys know the drill. You guys are already probably in all that shit anyway. And of course, make sure to join the official group of Raider Reaction, the Raider Reaction Empire, the dark side. You need somewhere where you can speak your mind, where you got stupid ass fucking moderators and admins muting you and all that dumb shit. Y'all you, you, don't need that shit. You don't need that in your life. Fuck that. Some bitch ass motherfucker in a group is gonna mute me for 72 hours. Mute this motherfucker. I won't be in a group like that. Fuck that. No way in hell. Mute me. I don't even know where the mute button is in our group. What do you fuck? Mute. How are you gonna mute another grown ass fucking person, man? That's just ridiculous. Who the fuck are you? So, our group is not like that. We will not protect you, though, from the words. You know, there are words in there. If you're one of these people that can't handle the bad words, it's probably not the group for you. That's all I'm saying. So, last word on the Jets. It's an NFL road win, ladies and gentlemen. It's an NFL road win that kept the NFL franchise that we all support and love relevant and in the playoff push. Understand what that fucking means. Don't be a fucking deet to deet out there fucking pissing all over a victory. How are you going to piss all over a fucking December victory in the National Football League? Are you goddamn idiot? Get the hell out of here with that shit. Come on, man. Come on, man. You, 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 you're more intelligent than that, you Raider fans out there. Come on. It was the Jets. I get it. These guys didn't want to be embarrassed. You think they want to go down as one of the only 0-16 teams? Seriously. I, do, I think you underestimate the fight and the pride in a professional athlete who's about to go the Ofer, man. That doesn't happen in sports. That's a bad, bad thing to have. Uh, uh, you, know, you spent your entire career to get to the pinnacle, to get stuck in the hall of shame. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. So you've got, you got to recognize, this was an NFL road win in a place you hadn't got one since 1996, ladies and gentlemen, over two fucking decades. So understand how important that win was. And what it is. But you do got to understand how important that loss 
against the fucking Falcons was, too. Because that was real, real painful. But one last look back at that Jets game. We are back. We are back. And it's all right. We've talked enough Jets. I mean, it, it was a great win. It was an East Coast win. It was an NFL road win. It, nothing nothing to be scoffed at. The, I, I, the, the people that are, are don't appreciate it, I, I just think, I, I don't understand that. I don't understand that mindset. An NFL road win is a great thing, especially in a stadium you hadn't got one in since 1996. That's a big goddamn thing. So, now... It's time to talk what's left. There's four weeks left in the regular season, ladies and gentlemen. Your Las Vegas Raiders have positioned themselves in, in a place that they're not, not familiar with being. So I thought, I, I'm just too biased to break this one down. And plus, you know, it's Wednesday anyway. He's supposed to be here anyway. So we bring in the Raider Reaction, resident sports guru. The one, the only. Prime. Tell me breakdown. Colts, Raiders, week 14. What's up, Ryan? What is up, Kamish? That was a big win last week, but that's right. You got to look ahead. Indian Indianapolis coming up next. It's, oh, man. It, it, you, know, you know, you got that quarterback battle. That's the first thing I got to bring up. And it is that I, I'm, I'm going to stand right here and say it. This is the biggest quarterback matchup Derek Carr has the rest of this goddamn season. This is it right here. It, it's not Carr and Mahomes. That's that's done. We've seen what that can be, Prime. This is the matchup. This is there's more history between Carr and Rivers than there is Mahomes and Carr. These guys have been division rivals. They've been battling that out since Carr came in the fucking league in 2014. Rivers beat him twice in 14. Carr beat him twice in 15 and 16. They lost twice in 17. Then lost twice again in 18. And then they swept them last year. They're 6-6 six and six career against each other, Prime. This is a huge... I, I think it's, it's Phillip Rivers and Derek Carr. That is, that is the premier matchup of this weekend. Absolutely. When you talk about quarterbacks and you talk about Phillip Rivers... Philip Rivers, of course, you know him as that San Diego, L.A. Charger thing. Yeah, he was there. He had a totally different squad. But now he's in Indianapolis. Stupid bull o tie. And it, now he's in Indianapolis, and now uh, he's got totally different weapons. They're still trying to work out a run game, but I think we'll get into that. Yeah, they, they are, and... They're trying to figure out a run game, and the Raiders are stiff against uh, stopping the run. That is not one of the Raiders' weaknesses. Uh, with Clee Farrell back, uh, you see what he could do this last week against the Jets. He, he was a force back on the field, uh, and I, he's going to be big. Him and Max Crosby stopping the run. The Raiders have been solid. They're they're in the top half of the league stopping the run. They've been up around 11 and 12 stopping the run. It's just the pass prime. This is, we know we know we know it's the past and they're giving up the big plays and the points. That's that's the Raiders Achilles, man, but it's it's not been it's not been stopping the run. So I think this this is a matchup that it's Derek Carr, you can't allow an old division rival to now leave the division, go to a new team and come and eliminate you from the playoffs at your house. That can't happen. In, you're damn right that can't happen. And the thing is, they just have to maintain what they've been doing on offense. I mean, they had that huge explosion 
you got to pardon me for a second while I pat myself on the back. I said yes. Waller had to show up, but he, he certainly did for 200 yards and 13 catches, I believe, and a couple of touchdowns. That guy was a monster last week, and you can't stop that momentum. you got to have Waller. you got to have Ruggs the third. You also have to have Aguilar, man, I tell you. If they can continue with that big play, uh, action that they've had as a lately, vertical game. And I tell you what, then yeah, they they should be able to. I guess yeah, beat those Colts. It, it's this is this is the playoffs prime. The, the playoffs starts right now. You've I mean let's let's look at what the Raiders have left on the docket there. Uh, you've got week 14 this this coming week. You've got the Colts, and then you've got a Thursday game. Against uh, the Chargers, which y- you should be able to handle the Chargers. I mean, look at what just happened to them last week, Prime. I mean, how yeah, you can e- by the Patriots. I mean, how you can even make an argument for them at this point? You know, they're they're going to be laying down. They're thinking draft picks, and their coaches are going to be playing like that and coaching like that. So, uh, it, it, don't sleep on that quarterback, though. I I don't sleep on their quarterback, but it's the rest of the team, man. I mean, uh, you look how their season's gone. He's done some heroic things all season, and they just can't seem to pull it out for him. Uh, the, the team just falls apart when it counts. But and then this next game after that, that Week 16 game, which is now a Saturday night prime prime time game, that is going to be a highlight game on Saturday night. The world is going to be watching. You've got Tua Tugavailoa leading the fucking charge with this rejuvenated Dolphins team. But Yeah, this Miami team that's also trying to make the playoffs right now, that right there is going to be one hell of a game. I mean, I'm talking about... I mean, Saturday night, can you imagine that? That's that's big like it was in the 80s and such when they had Saturday night games. Yeah, that's a that. huge fucking game, man. That's huge. And uh, the, the Dolphins' schedule is not favorable, Prime. They've got some tough matchups down the road. So this one's going to be big. This one's going to be big because I think they're going to drop one one or two in between now and then. So that game's going to be huge, even though the Raiders have one up on them. If they can get through the Colts. Now, the Donkeys in Week 17, that's a very winnable game. So you got two very winnable division games leapfrogged around two huge games. Your next game and then the Week 16 game, which are both the teams that you are currently chasing in the playoffs. I mean, it just doesn't get any crazier than this. The Raiders have backed themselves in a fucking corner in typical Raider fashion, I, as I, I hate to fucking say it, but it is. It's what we do. And the only thing to do now is just show and prove. Yeah, I mean, the record is going to speak for itself, and especially if you can knock out, you know, three out of four of these next four games, yeah. you know, I think that's going to be able to get you into that wild spot, a wild card spot. Well, let's look at that, Prime. Let's look at that. Um, because here, here's the bubble, basically. Here's the bubble right now. I'm oh, sorry, I kind of trimmed your fro off there with the uh, graphic, a little fro trimming. <laughs> but uh, Cleveland. They, Cleveland right now is their top dog in the wild card. I know the Steelers just lost to the nameless team this weekend, but I don't think that opens a door for Cleveland. They're still two games back of the Steelers, and I just don't think they. I don't think the Steelers are going to fall that much, and I don't think Cleveland wins out. I think they drop one down the stretch, so they're probably more of a, a four loss team, probably twelve and four at best. Could even be eleven and five. Hard to tell. If they you know go out a little more a little typical uh, Cleveland fashion, right? But then you've got Miami and Indianapolis right there. They're both 8-4. and four. You play them both once. Miami does not have a favorable schedule. Indianapolis doesn't have an easy schedule either. None of these teams got to just walk it through the end of the uh, season schedule either. All three have very difficult schedules. But you can't forget about Baltimore either that's sitting there tied with you at 7-5 and five with, with a, 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 a league MVP as quarterback. Right, and they've now got the, they've got momentum. The Ravens are moving that running game like they, I mean, they had almost 300 yards in the last game rushing against Dallas, so so you know and, you got to take that with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? And you just seen what New England did to uh, the Los Angeles Chokers. They absolutely annihilated them. They're sitting six and six. They're two games off the chase, but only one game back of the Raiders, and they own that tiebreaker against the Raiders, which is a fucking concern. So New England, you can't sleep on New England. They don't, they don't play in the toughest division. Prime, they could rattle off some wins here at the end too. Yeah, and you know that's just one of those things where I think rookie quarterbacks are zero and whatever against Belichick. You know, that's just yeah. how he treats those rookie quarterbacks. It's so, going to uh, get very interesting. I I don't. To me. 
the, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. I think for the Raiders to get in without running the table. I think it's gonna be very hard for them to get in without running the table with the, the Colts. The you you need the wins against the Colts and the Dolphins to knock them down a peg to catch them. You're already a game behind them. You only got four games left. There's only so much ground that can be caught. Uh, I, uh, I, you, this is a must win. This is a must win game this weekend. I don't see any way around it. Yeah, it starts this weekend and they're going to get that home cooking. You know what I mean? And as long as they keep playing the way they have been playing on offense, they're good to, going to definitely need to tighten up on defense. I don't know why the Raiders have struggled with their defensive back end for a couple of years now. Yeah, it's, it's but been But it a, seems like it just never really rounds into form, you know? And no, it's been a while. It's been a while. They brought back Daryl Worley this week, um, which I, you know, I mean, there's a reason he left. So <laughs> they brought him back. I mean, they've tried to add some pieces for what could be. A, I like that they've went out and they've added, picked up some guys off waiver wires, and they've added some pieces here on the defensive line, and you're adding a Worley. You're trying to add some piece, the pieces that you try to add if you're going to make a playoff push. Because you're right there. Um, if you can win this game, all of a sudden you become very, very relevant in this playoff push. You're not just a fringe bubble team on the outside looking in anymore. You become right in the thick of it if you take down the Colts. I mean, these next three games are at home. That That's huge. You, you can't look past that. This is a home stand. You're not going to be traveling. Um, you know, the Chargers have no fucking fan base. It doesn't matter. There's no fans there anyway. But, yeah, I mean, you go play in L.A., you still got Raider fans. So. True, but I, I keep, you know, there's no fans at any of these games anyway in Vegas, oh, so yeah. it doesn't matter. But you do got the Dolphins who are going to have to take the uh, the east to west trek. You know, they've got to make that trek. So a little of that plays into your advantage, having the, this lineup as a home stand. So you got this three-game home stand. I think you got to win these three games before you even think about I think it's eleven and five prime. I don't think I'm concerned about t- ten and six gets you in. I thought ten would get you in, but I'm concerned if ten gets you in. I'm I'm concerned. I think they might lose out on a tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah. I think you're going to have to go eleven and five, and that means taking these four games. Now, the biggest contest in all of this is the first one. Is the Colts? They're coming to town, and man. If, as long as that's probably they're probably the best team left on the Raiders' schedule going forward this year. I think the so. Those are hot garbage. You got to go to Denver in that last game, but like so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they are hot garbage. They may not even start Lock in that last game. There's a good possibility uh, they just they trot somebody out there just to give them some fucking time. Um, so there's a good possibility that game's a wash. I th- um, the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins. I I think I'm gonna. See how critical that Dolphins game looks here in a week or two. The Dolphins got a couple tough matchups coming up, and I'm not sold on Tua taking them to that playoff level yet. Um, I don't know, because Tua seems to have some of that it factor. I can't really put my finger on it. Now, I know he's not as good as good as Deshaun Watson, but Tua Tungavailoa, he is actually, he's got a knack for winning. And it's not always pretty, but he somehow gets it done. He does. He's, done. He does. He's one of those guys that just wins. And but you know they and they still got Fitz Magic in there that you can toss in in relief. Hey, he's a, he's a firecracker. He's a, he's a wild card. Fitz Magic. You don't even know. He could just go out there and go bombs away on you for you know two hundred fifty yards and a half or something. Oh yeah, he's he he's there's no fucks given about Fitz man. He will go out and sling it. And, you know, that's good and bad. He's my, my fancy quarterback, so it's good and bad. I'll roll the dice with that fucker sometimes, though, and just let him, you know, he's won some games for me. He's also made me look like a goddamn fool, which is what he does with the teams he quarterbacks for. So that's why he doesn't start for them all the time. But I don't know. Um, the Dolphins got a stout defense, and um, if they can steer two in the right direction, it could be, it could be an interesting one. But it's prime time. It's gonna be it's gonna be a ton of hype around that game, Prime. It's week sixteen. Both oh, of those teams huge. both of those teams are going to at least be on the bubble and still in the playoff conversation at that point. Yeah, I would think. that'll be the topic of conversation for sure that whole week. That is definitely going to be the biggest game, maybe of the year, as we come towards the uh, playoffs. Yeah, it's already I mean, there have been some pretty big games, but this Raider Dolphin game could have more on the line. 
been anything previous to that, and I think, yeah, it's going to be that big on a Saturday night. They'll have their main crews out there and everything, man. Um, boy, boy. Raider Reaction will also be there for that game. We're going to be on location out there. We'll be uh, we'll be trolling around Allegiant Stadium, all of the, all of the hot spots. We'll be on the scene for that uh, Saturday night primetime game. So if you're out there, check us out. I will have uh, be toting Raider Reaction swag. If you find me, i got goodies for you. But um, speaking of goodies, Prime, we're giving away 28 prize packs tomorrow night. If you're an official supporter of Raider Reaction, go click that blue button at the top of the Raider Reaction Facebook page. Well, hell, why don't I just let the commercial... This Thursday, December 10th, is the next supporter raffle on Raider Reaction. Have you become an official supporter yet? All you got to do is go to the top of the Facebook page, click that blue button to become an official supporter of Raider Reaction, or go to RaiderReaction.com and click the supporter tab. All of the info is there. 28 prize packs to give away tomorrow night from RaiderNationStore.net, Raider Reaction, and Motosports.com. Do not miss out. Become a supporter now. So, let's, let's get down to brass tacks. Rich Gannon is on the record this week, Prime, that the Silver and Black will not make the playoffs. Will not make the playoffs. He says they will be inside looking out, or outside looking in because of their defense. He said the defense will be the Achilles heel for this team and down the stretch, and they will not make the playoffs. That's what Rich Gannon says. So we, we've looked at the schedule. We've looked at the chances. They have a 40% playoff chance right now, Prime. We've looked at the numbers. We've looked at it. That's, that's out of 192,000 scenarios. They have a 40% chance to make the playoffs currently. We've looked at the bubble. We've seen it. We've broke it down. We've looked at the schedule. We know who's left. What is your take? Right here. It's week 14. Do you think the silver and black will make the playoffs in 2020? Well, Rich Gannon is no longer my favorite Raider quarterback, for the record. <laughs> I was a little disappointed in Rich myself. He, but yeah. the Falcons' loss was bad, and that one really, really hurt. It really, You needed to win that Falcons game. 7-4. Yeah, it would have been, nice. been nice. We can't worry about the past. We can only no. look at the future. And right now, the future is the Colts. The Colts are coming to Vegas, baby, and they can absolutely do it. Let it fucking fly. That's right. Rely on your weapons. Let your talented offense do what it can. And defense, just hold. Don't bend. Don't break. You know what? I'm giving up 30, goddammit. Coaches, stay out of the fucking way! Let these guys play, man. This team is starting to be something, Prime. You've seen it against the Chiefs. This team can really be something. The coaches would stand in the fucking way. Quit throttling down this offense, man. They about lost that game against the Jets. It was hard to watch in the second half. You saw Waller have, like, the greatest half a tight end ever had. And then you just, like, drop it down three gears after you score on the first drive of the second half? I just didn't understand it at all. Got them fuckers. You go up a, yeah. you go up three scores on the Jets, dude. They lay down. As you step up. on their neck and you don't let off. That's how football is. This is professional. This is not college. This is not just a game. No, this is something more. And when it comes down to it, no, you don't hold up you don't hold back anything. No, I hate that fucking playing not to lose shit. Fuck that playing not to lose. You play to win. Fuck I playing not to lose. Every last team, man. You I hate man. that. Oh, oh well, we got a we got a lead now. We got a two score lead now. Let's grind them. Now, it's fuck enough. that. That's where I want to see you fucking stretch them, gut them. <laughs> so you hang back a shotgun and tell them to eat it. Yes, you you've got them running. They're running scared at that point, man. As I'm telling you, this this Raiders team is getting to be like one of those. This is the fucking. Offensive, a little bit of an offensive juggernaut. When you got Jacobs out there, Waller's clicking, wide receivers are clicking, Carr's very efficient. The offensive line, you got Trent Brown possibly coming back Trent this week. Brown coming back, that giant man of his. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, I'll fucking believe it when I see it. <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. But at least he's oh. been out practicing. And, but well, when you see it, you won't miss it. That dude is giant. I, you're gonna, yeah. When he's there, 
It just him being there, having to run around that fucker on the end of a line, just takes a second. <laughs> you know, it's it's a, that's a big body and a big wingspan. It just it's a big human being just to be out there. You know, you know, if he comes back and that offensive line clicks, I mean, like we've seen signs of it early, but I'm saying if they can just click and just get on that level as one unit, and you got your big badass out there, and and everyone's well, fuck. I mean, of course, I mean, Richie Incognito's still out, I think. Yeah, he's done for the year. He, he's yeah, IR. So, I mean, like, you've already lost some part that is, you know, an important part to that line. But if you guys, if the offensive line can come together, that can alleviate a lot of woes, man. Oh, I mean, yes. If car time, that's dangerous. It's He'll been that tackle, hard. man. It's been that bookend. They've been missing all gear prime. They've been rotating guys there. And then when on Incognito went down, he started moving guys around. Um, you know, you've, you've had injuries on that offensive line. Uh, Denzel Goods filled in well. Uh, Parker's been hit or miss. Uh, you need, you need, we need Trent Brown. He would be huge for a playoff run. Um, there's been a lot of talk about whether Gruden has been playing a little bit of chess with the media and uh, the availability of possibly Josh Jacobs or and uh, or Damon Arnett or Jonathan Abram this weekend. Um, he's been hitting with all of them. So there's a good possibility that uh, some of the uh, folks that are covering the beat out there are saying three out of the four could play this weekend. So you've got Arnett, Abram, Jacobs, and Trent Brown. And they're saying three out of the four will probably play this weekend. One of them might not. So that, that's a that's an interesting take there. <laughs> that's real interesting. Like, like, guess which three? Yeah, guess which three. <laughs> it's like, is this a cup game or something? I don't know. No, look. But more importantly, you know, what, what I'm really saying is, first of all, yes, the offense needs to click. The defense needs to bend, sure. But don't fucking break. Don't give up those big plays. And you know what? I just took a look at the schedule of the Indianapolis Colts. Mm -hmm. And their final three games are that road trip to Vegas. Yep. Okay. Then they got to play the Houston Texans. And then the Steelers. Yep. That's a loss. Possibly, that's that could be that's that's a potential three losses right there. They yeah, could they literally go up with three of those games. The Raiders could beat the Colts. They're at home. The Texans, their game with just about anybody. Who it's a fucking coin toss. Who knows? Yeah, but, they, they are. But the Steelers, you know, the Steelers are good enough to take them. So literally, that's three losses for the Colts. So that really kind of puts them right out of that playoff line. Yeah, take a peek at Miami's schedule as well while you're at it, Prime. And they've they got a very tough schedule down the road as well. Uh, I do believe Miami has to play the Chiefs yet. Uh, who else was on their schedule? Let me pull that up pretty quick. I had it up earlier. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Yeah, they got to play the Chiefs. There you go, you got it. They got to play the Patriots, and they got to play the Bills. Yeah, three. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They've got a tougher road to hoe than anybody. They've got three possible playoff teams. You've got a team in the Patriots who's still fighting, and you know, for a spot. You've got the Bills, who you know they're talking about them as one of the top ten teams in the league, one of the top teams in the AFC. They're fighting for a fucking first round bye, and yeah, and uh, the Chiefs. If the Bills do what they've been doing, and that's uh, playing pretty decent football, um, the See, Patriots are not going to make the playoffs. No, I don't think the Patriots are going to make the playoffs. I think the Patriots are on the outside looking in. I think the yeah. Dolphins, the Dolphins are, because we're looking at their schedule, I think the Dolphins are the, the one that I think will fade. I don't think, I think the Colts are probably going to most likely get the Texans. Um, they'll probably lose to the Steelers. That I think they'll end up with probably around eleven and five, uh, maybe ten and six. Hopefully, we can get one against them as well and add you know two more to them. Drop them to ten and six with our loss and the Steelers' loss. When you're looking at the Dolphins, they could lose all three. They could lose three games, you know, easily. They could lose to us. They could lose to the Patriots. They could lose to what'd you say the Bills and they got the Chiefs too, right? Right. Yeah, they could lose all of those fucking games. Realistically. They're, so I think the Dolphins are the team that could completely fall off and come out of this. And that would, if the Raiders came in at 10-6, and six, maybe with the complete fall off of the Dolphins, you still get in. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if they fall off, absolutely. Even, 
but, but I, I still believe the Raiders can actually win out here. I really do. And I think that Colts at home thing is really going to serve up the Raiders real nice. And then the Dolphins, yeah, I don't think they're uh, they're going to be able to hang, you know, out in Vegas. No, not at all. The Chargers, of course not. And the, I, the Broncos, yeah, you're going there at the end of the year. And I make that argument for all of those games, Prime. I make the argument for all of those games. Just my biggest concern is, is you've left yourself no margin for error again. And I, I just I hate when t- we do this to ourselves, and we do this to ourselves more times than I can fucking count. You just leave yourselves no margin of error. You know, you, your playoffs have started, and you know, we're week fucking thirteen. Your playoffs started last week. You lost to the fucking Jets. You were done, done. So the playoffs started last week. So you 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 just backed yourself in the corner where you've got to come out swinging so much earlier than everybody else. You know. Other teams, you know, they can still lose one here or there down the street. There's no, you can't fuck up or your season's over. When it's that, it just puts so much pressure on you, so much unneeded pressure. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but I think that's a pressure a lot of teams have. Because honestly, the Colts, the Dolphins, uh, the, even the, uh, the Ravens, you know, if they lose one, I mean, everyone's got to go for perfect right now. Yeah, it's true. I mean, that's, that's where a lot of teams are. I mean, that's somebody. Somebody's going to make the push, and somebody's not going to make the push. Yeah. So you know, you you theorize that the, the Ravens are going to make the push, I, but at the same time, it's there's been some inconsistency out of Lamar Jackson there and that Baltimore offense. So yeah, I I just I think out of the teams on the bubble, they have um, they recently have the most. Uh, Incredible track record of, of, of a team that can put it together and have that push at the end. They've got the coach that has the track record. They've got a quarterback that's shown he can get it done. Um, you know, I, I just think they have the pedigree to look. If you're looking at the Patriots with Cam Newton, or if you're looking at the Dolphins with Tua, or you know, even the, the Colts with Quivers, the, the Ravens have shown with all of those teams that they've been able to get it done. So if you stacked all of those right where they're at right now, I would put the Ravens ahead of all of them to have a, a better chance. I, I think they could – I think they get one of the wild cards. I think it yeah. could be them, I think us, and the Colts. Win. I think the Dolphins are the ones that fade out. Yeah, I think the Dolphins or, fade excuse out. Me, the, 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 I keep forgetting about the Browns because the Browns are sitting up there. They've got the one lo- damn near locked up. Uh, they're going to lose to Pittsburgh coming up here soon. Well, so. They're going to lose to Pittsburgh, and that's going to drop them to four. But like we, we just talked about Miami and Indianapolis, they're not running the table, so they're going to take a hit. So Philly's, I mean, uh, Cleveland's got a couple hits to take still, I think, before they fall down to those guys. So... It's going to be interesting, man. I, I I think it could come down to us and the Colts getting in. Uh, the I think it could be Cleveland and the Ravens getting the other two. It's going to, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting run. That's for damn sure. What's, yeah, that's for sure. I'll be watching. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Graham Steele, like what he says, the problems with the Ravens, they rely on Jackson way too much. And it's going to get him hurt. And that's, I, I agree with that. And I think that eventually will get him hurt. But is this the season? You know, because I, I watched him. I watched the game the other day, man. The fucking it's like fourth down. The guy drops back and he's running thirty-seven yards up the middle for a touchdown. Untouched for yeah, a touchdown. Yeah, it's just like you know. That's not gonna put you out. No, it's not. He's dynamic, yeah. and I mean, he's, Lamar Jackson is still dynamic. He's still Michael Vick two point oh, or maybe three point oh. There might have been another one in between there. He is. Anyway. He is. And uh, so. Prime, I think the Raiders make the playoffs. I think they're going to go in at 10-6. and six. I'm concerned. I don't think they're going to run the table. I think they're going to drop one down the stretch, and I think they're going to need a little help. But I think with the way the schedules line up with all of the teams that they need help with losing, I, th- I think they're going to get that help. I don't think the Dolphins are going to finish strong. I think they're going to lose uh, enough games for the Raiders to overtake them. And I think they do beat the Colts this week. Um, I'm just... I got a feeling one gets away from him, man. I just, I have a bad feeling you one know, gets away from him. I, get, I, I can see one getting away from him, but would it, it would have to be the Colts. I don't even, I can't even say that, man. I watched the Falcons team just absolutely annihilate them, and I just watched them barely beat the Jets. Dude, so, it's home cooking. They're not going to. They're I, not I get it. 
I get they're it. They're playing an early game on the East Coast when they're playing any of these teams. I get it. I get it. I, they, I just, they're, it's, they're letting the doubt creep in my head. I just, I, I hate. I've watched many a West Coast team crumble when they go out East. I get it. I get it. All the stars have aligned, man. All the games are at home. You, you, you play the teams that you need to beat to, to catch. You play them. You control everything. I get it. It's just the you, when you leave yourself no margin of error, you just fuck up once. It can fuck up the whole fucking program. Those moments of greatness I can't overlook, and I understand there was Atlanta, but I can write that one off as another West Coast team to crumble on the East Coast when playing an early game in a damn time zone. Anyway, yeah. Besides all that, I can see. Yes, absolutely. I can. Players. I can see the story. The story's been writing itself all year. This fucking fucked up 2020. And I can see. Uh, I can see where they could ride it. so fucked up, the Raiders could win. That's I'm telling I'm you. They can ride it. I, I, they can do it, but it has to start this week. And you've really got to see a big game against Quivers. That's for damn sure. Prime, I, I want to give it a quick abbreviated, abridged WTF before, before we get out of here. All the Raider yeah. fans... That fucking have been whining about this win in New York. I, it is an NFL road win, ladies and gentlemen. Going from east, from west to east, is not an easy thing in the National Football League. The Raiders hadn't done it since 1996 against the Jets in New York. This was a huge win. Yes, it wasn't the most beautiful fucking thing. It was a heart attack, hail mary win. But it's a win. A win is a win in the National Football League. You only play 16 games. And one win is a big fucking thing. When it goes down, it's a W, and the yeah. W's count. Period. It doesn't. Nobody looks back at anything but the end. You got ten. Ten will probably get you in, and that's one of them. That's one of them. So, lay off the Jets win, man. It was a win. God damn it. Prime, we're out of here, buddy. Thank you for joining me, as always. Yeah, but don't forget to tune in tomorrow yes. when I tell you... What you can do with your fantasy football team is you go into the playoffs. That's I'm right. For two this year, you know I didn't make it to the playoffs in both of my leagues, just one of my leagues this year. So yeah, um, we. You know it is what it is, but I'm telling you, I got that winning, winning formula. Hit there me you. up on Prime's Fantasy Island tomorrow night. We're out. Peace, love. Every Thursday night, right before kickoff, the Raider Reaction resident sports guru drops his last minute nuggets on who you should start, who you should sit, and what the fuck you should do in fantasy football. Welcome to Fantasy Island.